Good morning. Most of us get COVID and we spend our quarantine period watching Netflix and apparently you practice. We're glad you're back. <laughs> Who is visiting with us today? Anybody visiting? No? Okay. Your official announcement is... In keeping with the constitutional requirements of Christ Lutheran Church, the annual business meeting will be on Sunday, February 19th, immediately following worship. You have been advised. We expect everyone to be in attendance. If you want to read ahead, annual reports, there are some printed. The rest should be emailed to you. Uh, new member classes will start the end of this month in conjunction. There will be an adult Sunday school time as well, so we're having two classes. Uh, if you or someone you know or love is interested in joining, have them contact the office and we'll plug them in. If you would just like to come back to this class, it's just sort of a refresher, review of how we're structured, we Lutherans in the big sense and us here at Christ Lutheran in particular, you are more than welcome to participate in that class. Hospitalizations, you did well this week. Everybody stayed home, good for you. And pastor is here without a walker, so he will be signing autographs after worship. Good for you. Hey, that's pretty cool. We're glad to see that. Any announcements from the body for the sake of good order? Anything of which we need to be made aware? If not, please stand for the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Trusting in God's mercy as community gathered here, we confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. (laughs) Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. And also with you. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. mercy you receive the prayers of all who call upon you by your spirit show us the things we ought to do give us the grace and power to do them through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord amen you may be seated Jesus, light of 
A reading from Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush? and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, and when you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, 
If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. The desires of the wicked will perish. A reading from 1 Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified, And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not the plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. For those who are unspiritual do not receive the gift of God's Spirit, for they are foolishness to them, and they are unable to understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. Those who who spiritually discern all things, for they are themselves subject to no one's scrutiny." 
For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, the word of the Lord. According to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but it's thrown out, trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket but on the lamp stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of the letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. It hurts my heart to say this, but travel back with me 50 years to 1973. Oof. <laughs> it just doesn't seem possible. Woo! That was the year we heard words of desperation but also words of hopefulness. A test flight has begun. And then that test flight goes horribly, horribly wrong. There's a blowout in damper three. The test craft hits the ground and tumbles end over end over end, and then the voiceover continues. Steve Austin, astronaut, a man barely alive. You remember this? Oh, no, this, this is not like Orson Welles. Don't get excited. This didn't really happen. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. Steve Austin will be that man. Better than he was before. Better, stronger, faster. And then that music starts. Dun, 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 and the slow motion running. Dun. Da, 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 da. Yeah, there you go. For five years, we watched better, stronger, faster, six million dollar man and his gal pal, the bionic woman. Since calling her a six million dollar woman would have sounded a little tacky, so they didn't call her that. Superior human beings, just like us regular people, except they had value added, they had been improved. And that show resonated with a lot of people. That notion of being better, stronger, faster. It's so very tempting. At first blush, it seems like the Gospel of Matthew has Jesus saying something similar. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, unless you are better, faster, stronger, bionic, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, that doesn't sound very encouraging now, does it? The pressure is not just to be successful. The pressure is for perfection. 
We have got to be without spot or blemish. We have got to be right and be righteous all the time. No slip-ups, no letdowns, and certainly no mulligans. I don't know how people do that. It's one thing to watch a cheesy TV show and dream about being bionic. It's quite another to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, to be perfect. Because if that is the expectation and the demand, then you and I are in serious trouble. In our heart of hearts, we know that we do not, cannot, and will not achieve perfection. Any more than you can reasonably look at someone drowning in a swimming pool and say, well, just keep treading water. You won't drown as long as you just keep treading water. After a while, that no longer works. It's called a council of despair. It is beyond our capability and our ability And that, brothers and sisters, is precisely the point. The tendency and the temptation is to assume that we can do it all on our own if we just try really, really, really hard. At its core, that is the definition of idolatry. We worship ourselves. We have the technology. We can be bigger and better and faster. We don't need God. We can use supercomputers. We can use artificial intelligence. We have the technology. But at the end of the day, we remain the same flawed and failing human beings that we have always been, simply with better toys. Our toys get better and bigger and faster. The human animal, not so much. The good news The gospel of Jesus Christ is not a counsel of despair. It's not simply try really, really, really hard. It's not a counsel of pull yourself up by your bootstraps. The good news of God comes to us in the person and the power of Jesus Christ, doing for us that which we are incapable of doing for ourselves. The righteousness demanded, expected, required is very real. And it belongs to Jesus. He is the perfect one. He is the one without spot or blemish. The good news comes screaming through, not in verse 20, which is the do this or else verse, but in verse 17. Don't think that I've come to abolish the law and the prophets. I've not come to abolish, but to fulfill. The law matters. It matters so much that it costs the life of Christ. But it is Christ Jesus who fulfills the law and the prophets. It is Christ who acts on our behalf to make complete the righteousness that we lack. In Theo speak, which is why I went to school, this is the difference between righteousness which is imputed and righteousness which is imparted. Imputed righteousness is righteousness which is cast over or loaned, right? Imparted is given. It becomes part of the recipient. The question here is the righteousness of Christ. If it were imparted to human beings, it would become part of us, given by Christ to us, much like Steve Austin and his bionic legs and arm and eye, right? He would be bigger, better, faster. The other option is for it to be imputed, cast over, loaned to humanity, like a raincoat which covers us. The righteousness belongs to Christ and we receive the benefit. God looks at us and sees the righteousness of Christ. It's Christ who fulfills the legal requirements. It's Christ who exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. And it is we who benefit, we who are grafted into Christ, made to be part of that body 
through our baptism, placed into relationship with him and with one another. That's why Martin Luther liked to talk about human beings as simul justus et peccator, at the same time saint and sinner. We remain the fallen, fallible creatures that we have always been, yet clothed, covered in the righteousness of Christ. That's the good news for this day and each day. And that's what lies behind and beyond Luther's explanation to the third article of the creed, right? We're not bionic men and women who try really, really hard through the use of superhuman technology or enhanced biometrics. We are sinners covered in grace, washed in baptismal waters. I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy, kept me in the true faith, just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the entire Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. Daily, in this Christian church, the Holy Spirit abundantly forgives all sins, mine and those of all believers. And on the last day, that Holy Spirit will raise me and all the dead and give to me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. This is good news. This is the gospel for this day. Amen. church, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
called together to follow Jesus. We pray for the church. We pray for the world and we pray for all in need. Call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and actions. Give the church everywhere courage to repent for ways we have tolerated and ways we have practiced injustice. Merciful God. Inspire our wonder at creation from the light of dawn to the beauty of the dark night. Sustain the unseen depths of the ocean to the plants and animals we know well. Bring healing to lands and communities experiencing natural disasters. Merciful God. Instruct the powerful in your ways. Provide upright leadership in business and industry that workers are not oppressed. Throughout the world, inspire voters and raise up politicians to heed your call for nations to practice righteousness. Merciful God. Loosen the bonds of injustice in our midst. Grant peace to endless quarrels and put an end to hunger. Break every yoke of oppression. Be with the people of Ukraine and the people of Afghanistan as they seek to govern themselves. Shelter all who flee abuse in their homes or violence in their communities. Satisfy those afflicted in any way. And we remember those especially who have requested our prayers this day. Betty A. Don B. Sherry B. Ruby C, Tara Lou C, David F, Judy H, Bill H, Lowell K, Paul K, Pastor Joe, Bev S, Vicki S, Walt and Grace T, Larry and Kathy W. Vicki H. Merciful God. Shape our congregation to be salt for the earth. Give us delight in your commandments that we are generous with those in need. Make us steadfast in our trust in you, ready with tangible mercy and compassion for our neighbors. Merciful God, we pray for this nation, our President Joseph Biden, Tennessee's Governor Bill Lee, Tennessee's Governor First Lady, his wife Maria as she undergoes cancer treatment, Cumberland County Mayor Alan Foster, and all first responders. Merciful God. Cross and resurrection bring redemption from sin and death. We praise you for the martyrs of Japan and for all those unshakable in faith toward Christ. Unshakable as their faith shines forth in their witness. Keep them in our remembrance and bring us with them into the kingdom of heaven. Merciful God. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to lift silently now before God's throne of grace those concerns, cares, and celebrations which you carry in your lives this day. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God. Trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. As you are able, I invite you please to stand. Peace of the risen Christ is with you always. I invite you to share that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings and thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power. Shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the beginning, the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Together as community gathered here, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light and bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate. Power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the prayer which our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, taste the joy of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. you are communing in your pews, the words you hear spoken at this altar are spoken also for you. The body of Christ is given for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you.
Please stand. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this meal. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you now and forever. Amen. Spirit sends us forth to serve. We go in Jesus' name to bring glad tidings for war. God's favor to proclaim. We go to Comfort. People of Christ Lutheran Church, who are we? Christ Lutheran Church is a caring community of the baptized people of God, saved by the gift of grace, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and sent into the world to share the good news of God's love. Go in peace. Follow the way of Jesus.